I'm Debbie Melvin. I'm with the Boeing Company, and I've been at the Kennedy Space Center for 23 years now, running the small business program. Um, what I'd like to do right now is introduce our panel of the prime contractors from the area that are not necessarily NASA. We do a little bit of everything. So I'm going to start with Joellen, and if you would go first. Okay. I'm Joellen Moore. I'm the small business program manager at IAP Worldwide Services. We're headquartered in Cape Canaveral. We are a, primarily a defense contractor. We do a lot of business overseas. Um, so if you have capabilities and capable of be, doing overseas work in base operations, uh, facilities maintenance, um, in, communication systems, uh, networks, I need to talk to you. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Suzanne Rahab. I work with, for Lockheed Martin. I'm the supplier diversity corporate leader and we are a major aerospace and uh, system integrator, and we're headquartered in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm Debbie Bailey, I'm from Harris Corporation. I'm a small business specialist. Uh, Harris Communications does communications from ground to satellite communications, just about any uh, form of communications services that you can think of. We're located in uh, Palm Bay, Florida. All righty, thank you. We'd like to go ahead and get started on some of the questions, and you guys jumped right in on the last group, so does anybody want to jump in right now with a question for the prime contracting panel? So I got a couple of questions that maybe will trigger some of y'all's thoughts and maybe some of the things you might want to ask or too shy to ask about right now. So let's start with uh, the first one would be uh, to the panel, of course, is that your companies are very large. Uh, Boeing is such a small company, I feel insignificant next to these folks, but you're very large and it's difficult to find and to navigate the appropriate decision makers. What advice do you give to small businesses on who to talk to to successfully market their companies to your business? And we'll start with Joellen. I want to thank my panelists for leaving me this seat. <laughs> Um, well, the best place to start is to look at the website and see if your SBLO is, is actually listed there, a small business liaison officer or a small business program manager, if they're listed. Normally, your websites will have either a contact name or they'll have a phone number where you can reach out. Um, if you can get a hold of us, that's probably your best bet to getting to where you need to go. Um, most of us, at least that, that I know of in this area, uh, we give you business cards, we have our names out there, we have you know, our uh, information out there. We're kind of the first step um, trying to get you to where you belong. Now, what you can do on the, the back end of that is once we give you an email address and s to send us some information about your company is to follow up with us and talk to us about you know what are your capabilities and where you see that fit within IAP, for instance, Lockheed, whoever it may be. Um, that helps us actually place you where you need to go. Do you need to talk to the business development people? Are you a um, somebody who has a specific market product? So you need to talk to maybe our buying community. Those are the kinds of things, that, questions that need to be answered. Yeah. Exactly. Same for Lockheed Martin. The first thing really to do is get educated. The website is a great place to start. Uh, for Lockheed Martin, we have a new uh, website called Lockheed Martin forward slash supplier wire. And the whole point of supplier wire is to get you educated and connected. We have a series of webinars that we've host. Um, they're free, but we also record them. So, uh, you know, how to do business, um, how to get a partner on a proposal, how to differentiate yourself. We have various topics. We also have a series of videos, too, on various topics as well to help you become educated. And then it's finding that advocate, right, getting connected. We're a huge corporation. We have five different business areas, and we really need your help to figure out where you fit into our corporation, and then we can find the right advocate. We're basically Match.com, and it's just really <laughs> trying to get you connected with the right person, whether it's a program manager, whether it's business development personnel. And then the last is to be prepared. So when an opportunity does arise that you're able to um, you know, respond to the RFP, we just heard a lot of great examples of what not to do, and we really need you to follow that suit too because as your advocate, we're putting in front of folks, we want to, we want to help you, but you, you, it's up to you to land that contract. And to follow up more, what they both said is, I think to know the company that you're targeting, uh, for instance, if you go to Harris, 
before you come to speak to us or email us, go on www.harris.com. There's three business areas and click on each of those three business areas. Underneath the three business areas, there's um, the different business uh, segments underneath them. See which one your company would be the best target for. If you're, for instance, a, a machine shop, you might drill down and say, here's communication, drill down and say, oh, GCS is the place for me in this um, SATCOM business. So that when you come to Harris, when you meet us at a show or online, you can say, I'm a machine shop, I would do well with a commercial space program and in GCS and this is where I think my fit would be. So help us guide you to the right people and points of context so that it makes us easier to figure out what your company does. And those are all things that are similar for most of our large businesses. With Boeing, uh, we have the same thing. We have a website when you go into our small business office. If you just go into boeing.com and do um, supplier diversity, it'll take you there. And it will ask you several questions and give you some contact information. I do know the SBA apparently has a website with our names on it. And if I ever find out who put mine up there, I will hurt them. <laughs> because uh, I get emails and calls all the time from people. They think I'm the only Boeing SBLO which is really kind of funny, because I'm probably the lowest man on the totem pole. But um, what I try to do as an individual, I try to find out what you are, who you are, and what you are, what size business you are. Please always make sure you tell us that so that we don't have to ask. If it's not on your literature now, you really need to get it there. You need to have, if you're a woman-owned or veteran-owned or service-disabled veteran, it's in critically important for us, because we just, that determines how many buckets we can put you in. And then I find that out, and then I find out what you can do. And then I'm going to give you an email address of someone who else in the company who can really help you. If you're going to be selling something that goes on like a fighter plane, I probably can't even spell it, much less know what to do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect you with our folks in St. Louis who work on the fighter planes, and I'm going to get you that contact. But it's up to you to reach out to them. I'm not going to be able to do that for you. There's just too many things to do during the day. So you have got to do that follow-up. And you've got to make your email appealing and eye teasing so that they open it to see what you do. And make sure, as I think someone said, don't just put a you know, canned capability statement. You can attach one. But in your email, write specifically, I'm checking on blah, blah, blah. And if you've done some work in the past that's really critical, put that in there. It's important for us to know these kind of things. And, and I know this isn't a critical area, but if you do, like Moses, where's Moses? There you are. Moses does a ton of community volunteer work that is absolutely mind-boggling. He has a program for young men that he has run for years. It's a quiet endeavor that he does, but that's critically important to us because we need to know that's the kind of person that we're dealing with. And when we know those kind of things, we use those in award nominations for your company when we nominate you for a SBA award or a large business or a small business of the year award or something like that. So the more information you give us, the more we can help you. But if you have one person's number, try to find someone who's got that exact product or service that you're looking for. That's the critical point, getting you in touch with the right person. Right? OK. You guys have got to have a question. Yes, sir. You prefer capability statements to be email or uh, friendly? Email. email. Absolutely. That, that's my preference because if you print it and hand it to me, it will probably not go any further than my desk because I'm very clumsy. Yes. The reason I'm asking that is for a lot of smaller businesses who get broad emails, they don't read them. Mm -hmm. It's something that's actually tangible and defined. Well, the thing, too, is we're trying to connect you to the right person, and we need your information. It's a lot easier to forward an email and to explain why we see the connection as opposed to hand delivering. We're, we're located all over the world, so. And if we had to scan it to get it somewhere, it may take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Somebody else? Could you expound a little bit on um, sometimes how difficult it is to get into this, some of these larger businesses such as these four here today and, and uh, how do you need to continue to uh, persevere to, in order to keep going at it. It's very difficult for a small business once you're running to know and we're, we'll, 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 we'll look into it. And, and can you kind of expound on that? I have a zillion stories, but I want you to. Besides using machete or something? Yeah, okay. <laughs> when do you guys want to take that? 
I'll, I'll start with it. Um, first off, you really have to know what market you want to go into. You know, and I'm not talking about just the federal market. You know, you need to know specifically within that, what do you want to do? So then you target a customer. You know, so if you're interested in working on DOD contracts, then you want to look at who are the defense contractors that you want to work with. And you need to look at those companies very carefully. You need to see who actually has opportunities in that area, you know, that maybe you would be able to participate in. And the second thing that you've got to do is, and we, we say it all the time, but it's very difficult to do, is you've got to do your homework. And it's that kind of thing that you've got to have first before you should really even contact anybody. Um, I think that a lot of times you just, we get, I get emails from companies and they sell things that we don't buy. And, or they sell services that we don't use. And, um, you know, and that's very difficult because I have to go back to them and say, you know, we really don't have a place for you and try and give you maybe another lead to somebody else who does. I mean, we do services ourselves. We do, you know, base operation services, all the facility services. So whatever you can support in that area is great, you know, and it may be a product, it may be a service, but I don't do the same thing Lockheed Martin does. So you really need to know who are those potential customers, and you need to have that planned out. This is my marketing plan. This is who I'm going to contact. These are the people that I need to see, and here's what I'm going to approach, because this is what I do. Yeah, I was just gonna say, for Lockheed Martin, we're a risk-adverse company, so it's, it's, we need suppliers that have a lot of experience in the federal marketplace that also, um, unless you have a specific niche area, that's a technology that we need. So it's good to, um, you know, have that experience. If you're a new business, it's really hard to get your foot in the door. The best thing I can recommend is to partner up with somebody who is experienced. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, it's, it's like serendipity. The opportunities aren't always there. Mm -hmm. You may be lined up. You may have all the credentials. You may have the right advocate. It's until that opportunity um, comes is that when it works out. And they won't, that's why you need to constantly do your name recognition. Contact your advocate. Let them know who that you are so that when it does come up, they think of you. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about are set-asides. Uh, the agencies are mar moving more into set-asides mm -hmm. where a lot of our programs, our contracts, are now being set aside for small businesses as the primes and us as the subs. Mm -hmm. So we're partnering in a different way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the uh, gov, govspend.com, I think it is, lists USA. all the different, yeah, USA, USA spend, spend yeah. lists all the different set-asides. So approach us. We, we are, you know, looking, we, you know, we're, co we're going back and looking to be the subs. And with Harris, you know, the IDAQ proposals that Moses, I think your part teams on, um, many of the awards we've seen for GTX have been, I bet you at least half of them have been on small business set-asides. You can register opportunities on the Harris portal or contact us and tell us how you would be a good uh, prime for the small business set aside and Harris or a large company can team with you to fill the technical gaps or the um, gaps that you need to fulfill that proposal. So Harris is very willing to sub to a small business as well. And another thing I think we need to look at is regions. You know, here locally, we are intensely IT driven or engineering driven area. And if you're an engineering company and you're looking to subcontract to someone who's a large business, it may be more difficult because that's gonna be one of our core competencies. So that makes it a little bit harder. And I know Moses, for instance, he, you know, he was trained, you don't mind me sharing, do you? Uh, by Mr. Dixon, <laughs> a, a dear sweet man who uh, taught Moses uh, when he was working for him and, and made him a fine businessman. And we have a contract with the company that Mr. Uh, Dixon owned. And the problem was Moses had a, a company that's just as good, but we could only hire one, and we already had the relationship with them. So if you don't have a lot of things going on and it's a, a long-term contract, there's something you, you may not be able to work on that yet. Wait till the next time it comes up. It may be 10 years. Well, probably five now based on the new government rules, but <laughs> just keep at it. Keep getting to know the SBLO or the engineering people because sooner or later it will break because your reputation will make you uh, who you are today. Okay? Another thing I say is if you get the opportunity to bid with um, for business, make sure you're as lean and 
mean <laughs> as possible. I know Harris is bidding on proposals at very, 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 very small percentages. So um, that's the only way that we see in the future that we're going to win business mm -hmm. is to be as lean and uh, yeah. stingy with our profit as, as we can. So I suggest that that would be a strategy for you all too. Okay, who else has a question? Yes, sir. How close or where are you in regards to reaching your small business goals? Mm -hmm. And are, how do they align with government goals? Are, do you go above what the government says? Is the goal an X percent for a woman owned small business or service each, disabled? Yeah, each goal is negotiated based on your contract. Right. So, as are you reaching your goals? Are you exceeding your goals? Yes. Boeing is, except for in, I think, service disabled, I believe that's, we're falling a little short this year. I, am for, I fortunately exceeded mine, but you know, that doesn't help very much because I'm the redheaded stepchild of the, the organization. My dollars are pretty small compared to what Mama Boeing does. But um, I, I think overall for the corporations, all of us have that integrity of the small businesses are so important to, to making the nation. You know, and Boeing's been doing small business programs for over 50 years, is longer than the SBA has. So we see the value added of the small business. It's just our dollars are shrinking just like the governments are, but our goals are still staying in the same and we're trying to maintain our, our utilization and our leveraging. And I'll let the rest of the panel answer now. Well, in, at IAP, we actually have um, multiple projects. Um, a lot of our projects are overseas. There are no requirements for subcontracting plans. Um, there are still, you know, small businesses that we do utilize. Um, a lot of the contracts, though, require us to use uh, nationals in, in the actual area. So those, those opportunities are limited. For the ones that we're doing here in the United States, we're doing very well on our small business goals. So for DOD contracts, we're on what's called a comprehensive subcontracting plan, and we negotiate goals for all our contracts that are 650,000 and greater, and so we have one set of goals. Um, in comparison to FAR goals, we negotiate, so you have the FAR goals, but we have our own goals based on you know, opportunities and, and a whole forecasting process. Currently, we are meeting and exceeding all our goals. However, we're also in the process of forecasting for government fiscal year 2014, and I can you know, say that the, the two Soshakana categories that I'm concerned about are uh, SDV, OSB, and um, small disadvantaged business. So um, I can see where we're going to be making great efforts to um, bridge that gap. And a lot of it has to do with the impact of sequestration. Mm -hmm. We're finally feeling it. Um, we're projecting a three, $3 billion cut for 2014, and a lot of those cuts are skimmed off small business opportunities. So, um, so that's another concern of ours. So um, you'll probably be seeing more of us looking for SDV and SDV, OSBs. This is also part of uh, the comprehensive plan program, so we're fortunate and excited about that. Uh, we're driven by the goals on that, as well as Harris's um, negotiated goals with DCMA. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our goals and percentages and dollars spent have increased since last year, so we're doing well in the small business goals. Um, a couple of the areas are that we're looking to improve on our small disadvantaged business and service disabled veteran owned small businesses. Mm -hmm. But we're still doing well with our goals. We project doing as well next year. Let me throw something else into the mix while we're talking about that. Uh, goals are very important and I don't know that you guys under, you know what we do with them. I mean, we don't look at them just once at the beginning of the year and the end of the year to see where we are. I have to review mine monthly. Every month I have to go in and I look and see where we are. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go and sit in with the director of the company, you know, at, in Florida and tell him where we are. And at the same time, the people at corporate are doing the same thing I'm doing. So these aren't just isolated projects. These are actual business rules. Mm -hmm. So that when we aren't making some of our goals, we have actual VPs looking into why you aren't making a goal. Mm -hmm. I know that on ISS out in Houston, we have a lot of large businesses that we have to sub with because they're basically a sole source almost. And because we're not making a couple of the goals, we're meeting with not only the director of ISS programming, but we're meeting with the, the vice president of space exploration on a regular basis. And that's not something you want to do when you're not making your goal. <laughs> so 
this isn't just a social program and it's not just lip service. We really commit to making those things happen. And I know everyone here does the same thing on a fairly regular basis. So, yes, sir. I heard uh, on a number of occasions today that one of the goals that no one's making or they're not making is the sort of say, well, we're going to go Why do you think that is from your perspective? You guys want to take that first? The majority of service disabled veteran owned small businesses that I receive information from are usually IT related um, in business. We don't do a lot of IT related specific things like that. Um, it has to be really on the communication side and it has to be usually tied to a opportunity that we're doing base operations on. So that makes it difficult, you know, to find those service disabled veteran owned small businesses who actually can do the things that we're looking for. So it just depends on, you know, what business area that they're in. And it's difficult, it has been difficult for us to, to do that. We're still doing fine, believe me. We're spending quite a bit of money with, with veterans and we're doing good, but that's always an area, that's an area that has been a problem, a struggling problem, you know, that we've tried to address through strategic alliances and that kind of thing. Um, HubZone is another one, so. Yeah, same thing. It's just trying to find qualified SDVOSB suppliers. We actually took an initiative to create a policy where we can restrict to SDVOSBs. Mm -hmm. Problem is there's just not enough that do what we're looking for. Um, the other thing too is we, we've seen quite a few SDVOSBs outgrow and become large businesses. So that is also impacting our, our um, numbers for next year. So we need to increase, we need to build the pipeline again. Mm -hmm. We've, um, I didn't say we didn't meet our goals. I think we, we met them or like very, very close to it. So we're doing very well with SDVOSBs the OSBs, but we'd like to continue and make sure we do well. Um, but opportunities like today, I've met, I'm really excited, I've met, you know, at least four businesses today that I think are really great candidates um, for Harris to add to our supplier base. So I think that's great. I think it's also a great networking opportunity. I've crisscrossed some small businesses with each other, said, hey, you know, maybe you would like to team up with this small other small business so that together your capabilities will be something that we could use at Harris. Um. Mm -hmm. Rhonda. Tony, hey, it's Rhonda. One of the things that you run into with, these, with our suppliers is they're either providing goods or services. So if you have a supplier that's mostly commodity driven, you're going to find the large businesses already have focus teams and the pie, the pie, the, the stable's full. And adding someone else just is going to make you slice the pie that much more. If you're primarily a services company or you're doing R&D like GCS is doing, you're going to find that, um, to an earlier point, a lot of folks are providing are providing like engineering services, which is a core competency of that company. So letting somebody in, you know, engineers like to birth their own babies, so to speak. So having someone from the outside outsourcing that can be kind of a touchy thing. So it's it's incremental by it's increment by increment. So you've got two different forces based on what that supplier would be selling. Mm -hmm. And that's something to think about too in the sense that um, I know on two contracts in particular that I was on proposal teams for, we realized early on that in order to make the goals, we were gonna have to subcontract and carve out work that we normally we do ourselves. So we made a concentrated decision to, to go after specific categories and, and we carved out specific work. So if you can find a proposal um, that is being bid or way before it's being bid, but if you find an RFP and you know something's coming down and you find a large business, can, and you can convince them to carve out some work, that's usually the best bet because that way you're, you have a long-term arrangement with them, you've got the work that you need and the type of work that you want to do. And it's a very good relationship for both sides. So, yes, sir. I wonder if you speak to the difference between goals and mandates. I think that the uh, SCDVOB is a 3% mandate uh, versus the goals. The mandate's overall for the government. The goal is for the, it, for, large businesses, it's a goal that's negotiated. My goal for this contract I just finished was 2.4 and we did 3.1.
for veterans. Okay, service disabled, not quite as well. But um, that's the type of thing, it's the difference is we have goals because they're negotiated for each contract. Ladies? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Got one right, I'm so glad. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I was wondering if uh, contractors like ourselves wanted to meet other small business program managers, do you guys have like an association of members where we can Funny mm -hmm. you should ask funny that. You should ask. That's funny. We have a business called Brevard Small Business Assistance Council, and that's made up of large business SBLOs, um, some attorneys, and a couple of accounting people. We meet together regularly once a month. Uh, we do not invite small businesses to the meeting because we're discussing stuff that's pertinent to our, our structure of you know, what we're doing with rates and, and things like that. If, you want, if you're a large business and want to join us, that we would love to have you. If you're a small business and you want to meet us, we do have events during the year and we'd be happy to have you come to those. We have a website. It's bizbac, bsbac.org. Please do not go to .com. You will get the Backstreet Boys Adult Club. That is not us. <laughs> Didn't even like them when I was young. So, uh, but it's bizbac, bsbac.org. And that's a list, there's a list on there of other SBLOs in this area. Yeah. And a list of events that we all usually attend also. Anybody else? ASDP. I'm sorry? ASDP. We have an organization called the Alliance of Supplier Diversity Professionals. It's mainly a training organization. Um, but that would be one way to contact us, yes. Uh, if you go to asdp.us, that will take you to a list and it, uh, to the website, and it will give you a list of some of the SBLOs that are on the uh, committees and the chairs and the officers of the organization, and you could contact them to find out if there's someone you're trying to reach specifically. Or so. any of us, you know, we do know a lot of people out there, uh, you know, and, and know who folks are who you might want to do business with. So you can call any of us, too, and we can give you some information. Or Andy yeah. Herold at 8A. Yeah, the 8A. They have a booth or FMSDC. Right. Um, they're a group where you can find all sorts of contacts with. Mm -hmm. And I know, that, as I said earlier, the SBA has a web page apparently with all of our names and phone numbers on it. And I still want to know who put mine on there. And you might want to check with your federal agencies as well. Um, some of them have lists of, uh, for instance, NASA has prime contractor councils, and they have a list of who the prime contractors are on those councils, and you can get that information from them. Yeah, if you go to the NASA, uh, kscnasa.gov uh, homepage yeah, under procurement, and then under the Central Industry Assistance Office, it should give you a list of all the, the board members. And when we know, like, uh, specialized search engines at all, you know, like, we specialized search at Google, we can type in keywords that go after your different contracts that you're looking for? Not that I'm aware of. Um, not, uh, and on Boeing, you can't Google to find out who's doing which program because they, we just don't post that kind of information. Okay. You guys? No. No? Okay. I was just going to say U.S. Okay. U.S. spending, is it? US? Well, that's true. USA yeah. spending, you, you can, can look up programs. And it'll you tell can you. look up yeah. contracts. Um, but I don't think you could find the SBLO, though, could you? And you won't probably, you won't find the SBLO. Yeah. But you'll just get information about your, about the contract that may be something that you're interested in. Okay, I'm getting the <laughs> <laughs> So, without any other questions, we'd like to thank you for coming, and we appreciate your attention. Thank you.